Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, December 15th from the San Antonio Express News. My name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect a high of 63 degrees and intermittent clouds in San Antonio today. Overnight temperatures will remain cold, dipping into the 30s for most of the week, including possible freezing temperatures early Thursday morning, according to the National Weather Service. The pandemic has disrupted the calendars of many of our favorite annual traditions, but there's a sweet silver lining to it. Girl Scout cookie season has started early in San Antonio. We have everything you need to know about placing an order online over at expressnews.com. Bear County commissioners will meet today to tackle various problems aggravated by the pandemic, including food insecurity, substance abuse, and mental health difficulties. We have a preview over at expressnews.com, and we'll have updates later today. And now let's move on to our top stories for the day. An Air Force investigation into Joint Base San Antonio Lackland's jail found multiple failures in policies and procedures that contributed to the death of a suicidal airman held there last year. Released Monday, the report identified significant concerns that presented an unacceptable level of risk at the Lackland confinement facility. The jail was to reopen Tuesday, said Joint Base San Antonio spokeswoman Lt. Caitlin Robinson. It has been closed since 24-year-old Airman Robert Dean Bryce was found unresponsive after hanging himself in the shower at lockup on December 5, 2019. Sig Christensen has more on this story over at ExpressNews.com. On Saturday morning, Milas Williams welcomed families to the Unity in December event at the Walmart store on Austin Highway. His nonprofit, World Lole, sponsored the event and allotted each family $1,000 to buy gifts and necessities. In 2014, Williams' brother Dietrich and Athena Williams founded World Lole, which stands for Loyalty Over Liberty Equals Integrity. Williams has had many identities during his lifetime, including gang member and prison inmate. The role he's most thankful for is his current occupation as chef, which has given him the opportunity to help youth avoid the pitfalls and temptations of the streets. Vincent T. Davis tells his story in his latest article. Texas Republicans on Monday couldn't resist making one last futile stand for President Donald Trump, even during what normally should have been a mundane and routine meeting certifying he had won the Lone Star State. After 38 designated Trump supporters cast all of the Texas Electoral College votes for Trump, they went off script and crafted a non-binding resolution calling on state legislators in Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and Wisconsin to change their pick from President-elect Joe Biden to Donald Trump in an attempt to erase Biden's win. While the resolution passed easily among Trump's most ardent supporters at the Texas Capitol on Monday, it meant little in the big picture of national politics. Jeremy Wallace explains why in his latest article. Columnist Elena Yala writes, quote, Netflix's Selena, the series, might have been overhyped. It might deserve some of the harshest criticisms it elicited. But no matter how much of it may have disappointed those who expected more Selena and less of her father and her brother, it has succeeded far beyond its ratings. It's broken through industry obstacles to tell a Mexican-American coming-of-age story, a Texas story, a Tejano story, and ultimately an American story. Read Elena Yala's full column over at ExpressNews.com. As the first COVID-19 vaccines arrive in San Antonio, questions remain surrounding its effectiveness and distribution. We have answers to some of the more common questions you may have about the vaccine over at expressnews.com. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside of your Express News subscription. San Antonio COVID-19 hospitalizations on Monday rose to their highest level since early August, with people infected with the virus accounting for nearly one in five patients in area hospitals. UT Health San Antonio was among four healthcare systems to receive Texas's first shipments of Pfizer's BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. The city's largest medical school received nearly 6,000 doses Monday morning. The San Antonio Metropolitan Health District is undergoing another leadership shakeup as a second wave of the coronavirus batters the city. 
Mary Gar, CEO of the Nonprofit Family Services Association, will become the city's interim Metro Health Director and will handle day-to-day operations other than the pandemic response. As COVID-19 surges through the nation, healthcare advocates are issuing last-minute reminders urging Americans to sign up for insurance through the Federal Health Care Exchange before Tuesday's deadline. The Texas Department of Transportation said portions of Interstate 10 on the northwest side will experience closures Tuesday and Wednesday nights so that crews can install digital message boards as part of the I-10 expansion project. The White House Coronavirus Task Force is increasingly suggesting that states including Texas begin shutting down again, saying in reports sent to state leaders this month that they aren't doing enough to slow the worst surge in COVID cases that the country has seen. The UIL State Executive Committee suspended Edinburgh High School senior football player Emmanuel Duron from all extracurricular activities for the rest of the school year after he blindsided a referee during a game on December 3rd. Duron apologized on Monday. Texas Republican Party Chairman Alan West said he was not advocating secession from the United States in his response on Friday to the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to refuse to take up a Texas-led lawsuit to overturn election results in four battleground states. San Antonio Food Bank officials said they're gearing up to help families put food on the table during the holidays but they're worried about what will happen next year as the economic damage from COVID-19 lingers. A national lawyers group on Monday pushed for state bar investigation of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and 17 other Republican attorneys general who sued in the U.S. Supreme Court last week seeking to overturn election results in four battleground states. San Antonians will now be able to let CPS Energy know how they feel about their utility bills. CPS Board of Trustees voted 4-1 to one to establish a rate advisory committee so the public can weigh in on issues relating to rates and which fuel CPS uses to generate energy. U.S. Representative Joaquin Castro is trying to reform a federal program that grants visas to temporary employees that he says make it too easy for employers to abuse those workers, the vast majority of whom come from Mexico, many to work in Texas. After eliminating change fees for domestic travel, major airlines are dropping the fees for international flights. Read this week's Wary Traveler for more details. The Express News editorial board writes, quote, Chuck Yeager was a tough man. They asked him to hop into a plane, and he did, ready to be propelled into the unknown. The X-1 aircraft moved faster than any plane had ever moved, and within seconds, the unknown became known. Read the full memorial to the late Jaeger over at expressnews.com. A new co-working space is slated to open next year in North San Antonio. Its operators are hoping a suburban location and a rise in remote work caused by the coronavirus pandemic will help draw customers. The 7,000-square-foot space at 1846 North Loop 1604 West is co-working franchisor office Evolution's first location in the area. Brian and Narida Coster of Austin will own and run the space, which will include about 35 private offices along with conference rooms and drop-in area with room for about 10 people. There will be a plexiglass barrier in the front of the reception desk, and the Costers are exploring touchless entry and a one-way walking pattern through the space. Read more about the company and the project's timeline over at expressnews.com. Smokers are too often relegated to just cooking proteins, but the same 200 to 300 degree temperatures cooking your brisket also work for snack foods. This is how to give sweet bacon, spicy pecans, and the classic Chex Mix a flavor boost from the smoker. In this week's Chuck's Food Shack, holiday snacks hit the smoker for a burst of flavor. San Antonio has begun conversations with the NCAA about the possibility of hosting the entire 2021 Division I women's basketball tournament in the area. The Magnolia Pancake House has announced an opening date for its new Cibolo location. Meanwhile, Farm Table, San Antonio's best health forward restaurant, will serve its last meal downtown on December 19th as it prepares for a move to Southtown. 
see who took home player of the week honors in our football rewind, and we also have updated area ranking in girls and boys basketball. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing for Tuesday, December 15th. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside of your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.